Hi and welcome to part two on the Ford Focus. Um, what can I say? It's rusty. Um, but anyway, so in this episode I have a look at the rear brakes, remove the brake shoes, um, sort of just give them a service, put them back together, grease it all. Um, I found it more challenging doing the brake shoes than removing an engine from a Mini. Um, but that's another story I guess. But yeah, so look at the brake shoes. Um, had a leaking cylinder on this side. Both rear springs were also snapped. So that's all four springs on this car were snapped. Um, there's also some little cables that I'm gonna have to replace because they've completely rusted through. Basically, it's everything to do with rust. This car, it's just rust. Um, the subframe doesn't look too good, it looks pretty rusty. Um, I'm quite concerned, to be honest, whether this is worth the 50 quid for an MOT. Um, but obviously I've ordered new springs, so obviously I'll do a video on replacing the springs on this car. Um, but yeah, I've got some doubts whether this will pass an MOT. Um, but in for a penny, in for a pound, I've started buying parts for it. Um, hopefully it will come good in the end. But anyway, you'll see in this video. And thank you for watching. And please like and subscribe if you like my content. And as usual, have a good weekend. So time to inspect the rear of this Ford. So we get the car jacked up. And we can start to see rust already. Garage is haunted. Um, all the floors just not flat. But anyway, so we get this wheel off now, and then we can feast our eyes on more rust. That's one thing we've got plenty of is rust. Tire is probably the best part. So just checking that over just to see if it's actually likely to pass an MOT. I think it might be okay that. So here we are then at the rear of the Ford Focus. And immediately I notice we've got a broken spring. So that's broken spring number three. So if we just go and take a quick look over this now. So we can see what we can see. I mean, I don't know whether this is all just surface rust um, or whether an MOT station will actually say it's not good. So there's no actual holes that I can see other than what's on the sill. So hopefully this is all just surface because the car was laid up um, on top of grass. It's not the best place to lay a car up. So there's our broken spring. Now my only worry with that is obviously I've got to change that spring. But looking at the condition of the subframe, am I likely to even get these bolts out? in one piece and I almost doubt that so what I'll do is I'll go over all of this with a air needle scaler um, so at least try and make it look better so coming down to the sill now the sills are the one thing I didn't want to weld um, because obviously you've got to weld upside down so it's going to be really awkward and you don't really want molten metal landing in your face so ideally I would turn the car over and put it on its roof <laughs> probably got nothing to lose by actually doing that um, but anyway let's carry on then so I'm going around the drum there just to shake things up, hopefully to make getting the drum off a bit easier. 
but also by doing this I can get to look at the car in a bit more depth. So let's try and get this drum off now. So I was hoping I could just pull it off, but it wasn't going to just come straight off like that. But thankfully Ford have actually given you a couple of thread holes. And if you put a couple of M8 bolts through there, it will actually sort of push against the hub. Because what you don't want to do is start whacking this and wrenching it off because you could actually damage the bearings in the hub. So this method is the safer way to do it. So as you can see, it pushes against the outer edge of the hub. So you don't cause any damage there. So we have a quick look at this. So we can see the self-adjuster there. There is a bit of brake pad material on there. Um, admittedly not a lot, but it does have material. They haven't fallen off like they had on my trailer. When I was doing that series, as soon as I pulled the drum off, the uh, material just fell off on the floor. So this is about to snap by the look of it. It's fraying, and the more I do that, it's actually starting to fray more. So I'll have to order a couple of those. But anyway, so we'll start taking it all apart, and at least we can sort of clean everything up, um, put some grease on there, and hopefully get things to work a bit more smoothly. Now I find doing this brake shoes a real challenge. I don't know what it is with them, but I find them so fiddly. It's like you need four pairs of hands to try and put the things back together. So I'm obviously doing something wrong, it can't be this difficult. Um, but yeah, it does give me a bit of a challenge, this. Discs are a lot easier to work with. See, they're even rusty as well, those little pins. So we're cleaning it all up. Also, you don't want to put grease on um, rust. Flaky rust is not going to help. That's a little rubber grommet there that's got to go back in. It's just popped out. Okay, so got a nice tray of rust there, and I'll just remove the lip on the drum. Thankfully, there wasn't much of a lip because that can cause a real issue if the shoes have chewed their way into those drums too much. And then while I'm at it, I'll just give a bit of a shake up to the underside of the car. So I think there's like two dustpan full of rust came off this car. It was a fair bit, and it was quite heavy. So the car should actually be lighter now and go faster. But as you can see from my facial expression, I'm not actually too impressed with this. It is starting to concern me whether I'm going to lose money on this. But anyway, we'll get it all cleaned up. and then start the reassembly process. So like I said, I don't know why I seem to have a real issue with these. Uh, there's obviously something I've missed with putting on brake shoes. But if you look in a Haynes manual, it's not very easy because the pictures are always in black and white, low resolution, so you can't really see detail in the Haynes manuals. So, you know, it does make it a bit of a challenge to try and fully understand how, like, the self-adjusting mechanism works and stuff like that. But anyway, so this is ceramic uh, grease I'm using, just dabbing that on where the shoes rub against the back plate. And then I'll put a little bit of silicon grease on the... Um, on the ends of the pistons. Oh, you see, it's fiddly, aren't they? Not easy, aren't they? I hate doing these. Oh, 
Oh, that nightmare. Oh, yeah, thanks. Why is this so hard? It's always, it's just an... Oh, for pity's sake. Stop bloody coming out. It's easier to change an engine. It's always difficult. Just an ass. Right, let's take that one off then. I mean, you're getting bloody grease on it now. Right. <laughs> Who the hell invented these bloody things? On there. Might be. Right, okay, so. It's not going to grip, no, because that's not in the way. It's got to pass that, hasn't it? Well, there you go, done it. Stupid thing. Get in there. That was a bloody ordeal, wasn't it? So now time to obviously degrease everything, because we definitely have got grease on those um, brake shoes from all the messing around okay so clean the drum as well there we go put it all back on and I then actually had another disaster because the cylinder the rubber boot had actually buckled so I then had to take it all back off again <laughs> and start again right so so we're trying again What did we do last time? We put the top string on, so it's this bloody adjuster now. This bloody thing's the problem. Why does it not want to turn? Right. And then the stupid adjuster doesn't bloody work anyway. Long side. Oh man, it's just such a stupid design. It's just so stupid. Oh, how can we make the most complicated braking system in the world? I know. And then everybody adopts it. Right, you in. You on there, yeah? Right, so it's just down there, yeah? On, on. Is it the right way round? Yes. That's now on, it's not falling off again. <sighs> Okay, now can we put the pin in? Don't you do Oh god, I can't bloody pull it. Come on. Yes, yes. No, he's not. He's sort of not in. He's not in. Give me something to hit it with. Oh. Gotcha. Right, are you actually on now and everybody happy? Don't tell me that adjuster's too tight. That bloody handbrake don't work. Handbrake wouldn't work. Oh. Handbrake's not working then. Right. 
it's not working. No, brilliant. So much for automatic adjusters. They're going in or out. No, my luck, it's probably going out. In. Actually, I think it is. What? What's going in? Why would it be going backwards? Is that with the handbrake on? Automatic adjuster. Yeah. Brilliant, isn't it? Works a treat. Off, isn't it? Yeah. Come on, don't be silly. Okay, got a message. Too tight. Yeah, got it. Are you little? Okay, got the message. Too tight. All right, got it. I think I got that message, mate. All right, so let's go that way, down. All right. How about now? It's still dragging. It is, isn't it? So now for the other side, and I will shorten this to save your pain. So here we go, wheel off, and voila, loads of rust. I'm, I'm starting to think Fords are disposable. They, they must have had this idea, let's make a disposable car, it lasts 10 years, after that it's already sort of... Um, environmentally dissolved itself and there's our broken spring number four I think what's so frustrating about this is the actual interior of the car and the engine seems really good but the external bodywork is just a disaster it seems such a shame But yeah, it's absolutely, it's covered in rust. It doesn't look good. So there's the other sill as well. And I'm sure if I pulled that plastic off, that's on the sill, I'm sure I'd be greeted by holes again, like on the other side. Um, it just, I've just never seen this amount of rust on a car. Not, this is a 2007 car. Why is it so rusty? You know, it's just incredible. But 
There we are, that's the condition of the car. And that's the gamble with buying abandoned cars. It's all a gamble, isn't it? Okay, so we'll take this drum off and see what we've got in here. There we go. So on the surface of it, it all looks okay. Um, give it a bit of a spray down with some brake cleaner. Obviously I'll do the same process on this side as I did on the other. Minus the paddies. Um, but what I did notice here is the cylinder was starting to weep as I was pulling these shoes off. Admittedly, I wasn't putting the shoes off in a, the most gentle of manner, but there's definitely some weeping there. So this could well need a new cylinder for the MOT. I think this is what's sort of stressing me out, is it's just how many parts do you buy, and if the car actually won't get through an MOT... What did you do all, all these new parts you've just bought? You can't exactly sell them again. So anyway, we go through the same process that we've done on the other side, try and get the rust off. Um, but my concern is whether or not it's like the springs. I can't see any of those bolts coming out without being destroyed. Um, so whether I can actually compress the springs enough to get them back in there without removing any bolts, I don't know. Um, but things aren't looking um, too good, really. This is pulled as far as it can. Yes. Put that in there. Put that down there and push. Gotcha. Gotcha. Surely it be that way. Right, so that's now. What's going on here? So, nearly back together. Just give everything a bit of a clean over with some brake cleaner. Um, I haven't changed the cylinder yet. I'll see what happens um, when it comes to the MOT. Because like I said, I've got to try and keep the parts to an absolute minimum um, in case it fails on something that I can't resolve. In which case then, all the parts I've bought were for nothing. So I'll just check that now. So thankfully this one's locked on quite nicely, right. but I didn't touch the adjuster, I just left it as it was. So again, I don't quite understand why these automatic adjusters don't adjust. I thought they adjusted every time you pulled the handbrake up, you know, or you put your foot on the brake and pulled the handbrake up. I tried all those methods and yet the adjuster didn't seem to adjust. Um, so all a bit of a game but anyway so that's the end of this second episode and here's some reference photographs that you can look at um, and enjoy the rust basically they're just photos of rust and broken springs all parts of a broken ford focus I find it incredible that I'm driving around in a Renault Laguna that's the same year as this car, and my Renault has done 100 and nearly 180,000 miles. Everything's fine. No problems at all with it. No rust, really. Um, and this thing, cuh, complete disaster, really. But anyway, so you've been watching How to Repair an Abandoned Ford Focus and hopefully get it through an MOT. Thank you for watching and supporting my channel. Please like and subscribe. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in May 2023.
and I can also be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coats and Gators.